This video is an example of a hypothesis test single sample for a population mean when sigma is known. And I want to do this example as a lower tail test. Here's the problem. It's a mouthful. A pharmacist believes that the average number of medications taken by elderly adults in the community is less than seven medications. A random sample of 26 elderly adults in the community resulted in a sample mean of 6.5 medications. Assume the population standard deviation is 3.1 medications. At alpha equal 0.01, can you support the pharmacist's claim? Assume the population of the number of medications taken is normally distributed. All right, so at this point in the course, um, you should remember that the first thing you want to do is identify the claim and write it in terms of the population parameter and then set the null and the alternative around that. So here's the claim. The pharmacist believes that the average number of medications, average, okay, there's a clue, burp, burp, blues clues, that the parameter is mu. Okay, so the average is less than seven. So writing that as a mathematical statement in terms of mu, I have mu less than seven. So this is the pharmacist's claim. Now this claim does not contain the case of equality, so this makes the claim the alternative. Remember, the case of equality belongs in the null. So this makes the null mu equal to seven. Now we need to um, write down the pieces that are given so we can construct our standardized test statistic. We're given that the sample size was 26, and from that sample, the sample mean was 6.5, and our assumed population standard deviation sigma was 3.1. So I can construct my standardized test statistic. It is going to be a z-score using the formula x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n. This is the standard error of the mean from the central limit theorem and plugging into the formula, I can see that I expect this standardized test statistic to be negative because what we observed is less than um, what is hypothesized. All right, so 3.1 divided by the square root of 26. Turning on my calculator, and again, you want to use parentheses around the numerator expression and the denominator expression just to make sure your calculator observes the correct order of operations, although I could have done this um, easily in my head, the numerator anyway. Okay, so the standardized test statistic is point, negative 0.822, rounding to three decimal places. This is pretty close to the mean in terms of a standard deviation, so I'm thinking we're going to be failing to reject the null here. But to know for sure, we can find the critical value and also the p-value. The critical value uh, is found by using our level of significance and stated in the problem the level of significance was 0 0.01 and because this is a single tail test this is a lower tailed or left tail test I do not need to divide alpha in two I'll have only one area of rejection and that will be in that lower tail so sketching a standard normal distribution, putting zero in the middle. I'm shading my area of rejection, and that area is 0 0.01. Remember, the level of significance is an area. It's also a probability, a, the probability of a type one error. And there's a couple ways to get the critical value. 
you could use your z-table and read in the body of the table to point zero or 1 and outwards to find that z-score. Or you can use your inverse normal function in the calculator. Going to the distribution menu, selecting inverse normal. My cumulative area, remember um, the uh, older TI-84s read an area that's cumulative. A newer TI-84, you can indicate what tail area you are looking for. So I'm going to switch that to left. And I get a critical value of negative 2.326. This makes sense with respect to what I expected. I expected my critical value to be zero because, I, I'm sorry, I expected my critical value to be negative because it is below zero. Now I need to compare the standardized test statistic to the critical value. If it's further out in the tail, in other words, if it's less than negative 2.326, my decision would be to reject the null hypothesis and I would be in support of the claim. If the standardized test statistic is um, in the fail to reject region, then I would not be supporting the claim. So this is a real number line. Smaller numbers are further to the left, larger numbers are further to the right. Negative 0.822 is pretty close to zero on this. So this is where Z star is, my standardized test statistic. So clearly the decision is to fail to reject the null. And to answer the question, where did it go? Here it is. Can you support the pharmacist's claim? So the correct way to say this, there is insufficient evidence to support the pharmacist's claim. If I can spell that, that would be a miracle. All right, so that's using the critical value method. The p-value method will give you the same thing. The p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic at least as extreme as the one obtained from the sample. So I'm going to sketch the um, bell curve again and put my um, standardized test statistic there. Okay, so I have my standard normal curve. I have my area of rejection, and that's 0 0.01. And I have my standardized test statistic. That was negative 0.822. Okay, so this is Z star, my test statistic. And since we have a lower tail test, the shaded area completely to the left of that is going to be the p-value. When the p-value is greater than or equal to the level of significance, then you fail to reject the null. If the p-value is less than your level of significance, you're going to reject the null. So just by looking at this visually, I know my decision will be to fail to reject the null because that p-value is clearly greater than the level of significance. But I can find that p-value uh, using the normal CDF function in the calculator. In notation, it's the probability that I get a z-score less than negative 0.822. Okay, now this is rounded. So in my next video, when I show you how to get the p-value directly from the um, single sample z-test in the TI-84, that p-value might be slightly different, but it will be close. Now, because this is a single tail test, I do not have to double this because we did not divide alpha in two. So turning my calculator back on, going to my distribution menu, Oops. Selecting normal CDF, 
My lower bound is theoretically negative infinity, so I can leave this as is. This is negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power, an extremely small number. My upper bound is negative 0.822. Whoops, I don't know what I did there. Let me go back to my um, home screen and back to normal CDF. There we go. We get an area of 0 0.206. So I didn't draw this proportionally or sketch it proportionally correct. I sketched a little more than 21% of the curve, but I'm treating this as a visual aid. All right, so I have my p-value, 0 0.206, and my level of significance is 0 0.01. This is greater than or equal, so my decision is to fail to reject. If I loosen up my level of significance to 0 0.05, 0 0.206 is still greater than or equal to 0 0.05. Uh, the level of significance, so the decision would stay the same. If I even loosened up that level of significance even more, I would still fail to reject. So my standardized test statistic is nowhere near being in an extremity, so I would fail to reject at all common levels of significance.